good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. This is Al Stefanelli, your host for Boquete Now Talk Radio. Radio Cherokee 103.3 FM, sponsored by Big Daddy's Grill, Boulder 54, and the Tap Out Sport Zone. We have a fantastic show for you today. I have in the outdoor covered studio, uh, Sheila Strunk and Phil Bennett from the VCP Tuesday Market. We're going to give you a bunch of information on that. But before we do that, we need to go over, <coughs> excuse me, we need to go over the uh, latest from Minsa. And this is from their communication number 136 which was yesterday and starts off with the national government fights COVID-19 through an interinstitutional effort as part of the strategy to combat COVID-19 the national government reinforces actions to strengthen the traceability system as one of the fundamental pillars against COVID-19 in this sense uh, this past Thursday a tour was made to the operations center for community control and traceability as well as the traceability center in the metropolitan area which was headed by the President of the Republic, Laurentino Cortizo, and the Minister of Health, Luis Sucre, and the Minister of Security, Juan Pino, and the Director of the CSS, along with a few other dignitaries. During the tour, the Minister of uh, Minsa, uh, uh, Senor Sucre, explained how the operation with the other regions of the country is coordinated from that center. He explained that the objective is to use technology complemented by human resources to keep track of the contacts of a positive person and thus design actions to cut the chain of infections. He added that it seeks to trace positive cases to find their contacts and prevent the spread of the virus. The work is done on an inter-institutional team that is responsible for guaranteeing food, medicine, and the necessary sustenance for people so that they do not leave their homes. The traceability process starts from when the person is diagnosed positive after a test at Minsa or one of the CSS centers and uh, is followed as follows. The patient's data and contacts are taken. The need survey is applied for household basics. After a study, food bags and other requirements are sent to your home. The health team contacts the person by telephone to follow up and thus comply with the traceability to cut the transmission chain of these people. So far, there are operation centers in San Miguelito, Panama East, Panama West, Metro, and the provinces of Cologne, Chiriqui, Herrera, and Los Santos. Um, unified purchases of medicines and supplies also came up. On Thursday, the President, Cortizio, with the Minister Sucre and uh, Lau Cortez, the director of the CSS, attended the meeting of the joint table that seeks to unify the purchase of medicines and supplies for both institutions of health. And, the president stressed that there is an urgency in the country due to the COVID-19 situation, so there are Panamanians who depend on how agile and fast this inter-institutional inter purchasing team is. And Alicia Chu, I believe I pronounced that right, the head of the biomedical equipment department of Minsa, maintained that the installation of this table for uh, joint purchases also seeks to supply medical equipment and medicines to all public facilities. And finally, the national government is going to buy Remdesivir, Remdesivir, I can never pronounce that, Remdesivir, I think that's how it's done. Minister Sucre informed that the decision has already been made that for the moment, the third block will not be opened. So I'm going to repeat that. The third block is not scheduled to be open and there is no date set for it to be opened. But they will wait until significant changes in the indicators are achieved. Now, when that decision is made, it will be phased in by economic and social lines. I think you might have heard that uh, referred to as asymmetrical, which means they're going to look at the different provinces and districts and make decisions on what's going to open based on that. According to the epidemiological variables, you have to have, you have to do what is necessary in order to save lives and the health of the population. So they are evaluating whether to be more drastic with the measures or to relax a little bit. And Sucre also announced that Panama will acquire the drug as <laughs> Remsisibidiv <laughs> at the uh, care of at least for at least a thousand patients with COVID-19. Yesterday there were um, let's see 20,437 people who have recovered already from COVID-19. That's fantastic news. 965 new cases. Uh, a cumulative total of 42,216. There have been 2,457 tests done uh, yesterday, uh, as of close yesterday, and there's a positivity rate of 39%. 20 new deaths have been registered, totaling 839. 
and the accumulated <coughs> uh, lethality of 1.98 percent. <coughs> Excuse me, I don't have coronavirus, I just smoke too much. Uh, that 1.9 percent is in comparison to, world, to the worldwide rate of 4.6 percent. So I know it's, it's frustrating having to uh, deal with all of this, but we are way ahead of the curve as far as comparison to the national situation. Anyway, that's it for the uh, medical news and the COVID news. We are going to turn our attention now to Sheila and Phil. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much Thank for having you. us, Al. It's so, nice to be here. It's, well, you know, I've known you guys forever, man. Um, we're going to be talking today about the BCP Tuesday market at the Feria, the fairgrounds. Uh, there's been a lot of questions on Facebook about, you know, when it's going to open, how it's going to be set up, and I know you guys have done a lot of posting and showing pictures, but yet, as we know how social media goes, things scroll by and the questions keep coming. Uh, we're also going to talk about the history of the market and a few other things. So let's start with Sheila. How are you doing? I'm great, Al. Thank you. So um, as, as we just actually discussed or I talked about, there is no certain date for the opening, but you guys are getting everything ready and into place, correct? Absolutely. We are signing up new vendors every day. Uh, we are working on laying out the space. The feria is uh, significantly larger than the spaces we've been in in the past. Um, it's about 12,000 square feet. Yeah. Um, great open, airy space, lots of windows, lots of lights. So there's a lot of opportunity to show some great merchandise there. Uh, we are working through the Mensa guidelines. Mm -hmm. They are quite specific. And uh, we are working with our new market manager. Um, we really haven't announced <laughs> that yet, but... Um, you heard it here first. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Ooh, do we have an exclusive? You do. Ooh. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> for for an hour. Pilar Esquivel, who has been our market manager for the last three years, has always had a great interest in children and education. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually shortly before the pandemic hit, uh, Pilar was offered a wonderful opportunity to partner with a gentleman who creates educational software. Wow. And we're obviously extremely sad um, that she won't be coming back with us when we can reopen the market. But we're thrilled for her. This is oh, her yeah. passion, and we wish her absolutely well, nothing but the best. She's great. Laura's fantastic. She has so much energy. She does, <laughs> and we have, with uh, with Pilar's help, um, hired a new market manager. Her name is Anda Miranda. Oh, um, you heard it here first, guys. You did. <laughs> um, you'll be hearing from Anna in the next few weeks as she um, joins with us to continue working toward getting the market reopened uh, but we are thrilled to have her and um, as I said we we just continue to work with the Mensa guidelines and we're going to be ready as soon as we can open um, when they let, with when the they approval let of the government now I know uh, I don't know if it was you Phil or Sheila uh, mentioned something about uh, in the picture that's posted there's no uh, air circulation. As someone mentioned that they put fans in there. I think it was Phil. Yeah, w let us know about that. Yeah, um, that picture I think was taken shortly after they refurbished the room, which I think was about a year or more ago. Um, they put in a drop ceiling, they put in extra lighting, they retiled it, um, redecorated. Um, but that picture was taken before they actually put in ceiling fans and from memory I think there's six or eight ceiling fans in there uh, plus all the way down uh, the one side nearer the river the window is open so there's plenty of uh, ventilation, ventilation opportunities there so yeah it's going to be airy light and of course all under cover which is a big Plus, no, we don't get any rain and wind here, though. So you know, it should no, not should, on Tuesdays. No, 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 no. It, it, it's never windy on a Tuesday, which has <laughs> been very good news. Yeah, and that you know, if if you haven't been, if you don't know what building uh, they're talking about, if you've been to Oktoberfest, if you've been to the Flower Fair, if you've been to the Medical Fair, it, that's the building they're talking about. It's right on the corner, directly across from the entrance to where the BCP Theater is, and uh, I guess parking will be addressed. Um, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we'll, you know, we'll just 
put it out there. Um, we all know that there is a new market that is being created mm -hmm. uh, in the space that we used to occupy uh, across the street. Mm -hmm. They do have a parking lot. We will have a lot of on-street parking. We are uh, negotiating with a property owner to be able to open their lot oh, cool. for parking. Okay. But we all need to keep in mind that when these markets open, uh, we are still going to be under social distancing uh, guidelines. For a while. For <laughs> probably the foreseeable future, future yeah. unfortunately. Uh, you know, that means that not only will we have to monitor the number of vendors that are in whatever space is available. Mm -hmm. Um, but we're also going to have to monitor the number of patrons that come in the door at any given time. Sure, yeah. If you're only allowed to have so many patrons, then there is only a need for so many parking spaces. It, it's yeah. Yeah, it's that's just true. logic. That, and that is true, yeah. I mean, you're not going to... You're not going to have you know 300 people in there at one time. Exactly. So, and we've uh, we've been in there when it has been jam packed, crowded. But uh, you know, following Mince's guidelines, I guess you got to have someone at the door with the temperature and oh, the yeah. feet thing and the and the hand. You know, and I'm making these motions as if you all can see me. But <laughs> the show is being like recorded, this. though, um, uh, and it'll be on YouTube, and I'll post all that later. But. We have to. I have to remember just not to pick my nose or do anything funny. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's actually. Uh, I hadn't thought about that. That's a good point. There is going to be a limited amount of people, so you're not going to have uh, as much of the of the parking problem as that you would have that yeah, people because people have addressed that on on social and Facebook. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, it's a, a it's a valid concern. Yeah. But you know, we need to all look forward and realize that. Our lives are not going to be quite the same as this pandemic hopefully tapers off yeah. and we are going to have to live with some restrictions for a while well even the vendors you know I mean the, the vendors and I understand you know all the vendors have to go through Minsa protocols and have to have the proper licensing and and, and, and then guessing at their individual booths <clears throat> I guess they would be responsible for not having people all jump people all jumble up um, but yeah, I, I think that uh, that location of being indoors will offer something different. You yeah, know, I, I think as far as the social distancing is concerned, uh, it, it can work out pretty well in the new location. Um, there is one entrance, right. so we already have the items in place uh, to be able to do the MINSA requirements at the entrance for yeah. checking people stepping in disinfectant everything like that and that's you know it's a legitimate concern yeah. you know we, we all we all see the you know the news and we see how this is affecting everybody and people are getting ill there's a lot of older people here myself included that might be at a higher risk group I think so I'm older than you <coughs> I think maybe you are <laughs> uh, but putting those uh, uh, protocols into place should ease everybody's mind a little bit about this is it's not going to be a free-for-all or everyone's going to be just running in and out also I mean, once, once you're inside um, with that room we have space for I think we worked out at least 35 uh, closer to 40 I think 40 vendors in there with social distancing so everybody can fit in there as far as the vendors are concerned plenty of space between tables um, probably a, a one-way system for uh, people the flow to the aisles, yeah, um, so that people aren't bumping into each other, and uh, it, it should work out very well, I think, from that point of view. Now, you had mentioned that you've been signing up vendors, mm -hmm. so can you give us an idea? I, no names, and I'm, I'm asking you for names, but what to expect as far as what might be offered, you know, there as as compared to, um, you know, what it what it used to be. Well, they're going to be very similar kinds of offerings. Um, we have several coffee vendors that have already signed up, several produce vendors, uh, artisan vendors, jewelry, food. Um, it's a very similar mix of products. Um, some of the vendors will be new. We've obviously had um, some space limitations in the past. We couldn't invite more vendors. We've had vendors on a waiting list for quite some time. So now, although some of our previous vendors are staying at the old location, we have a great opportunity to sign up 
a lot of the vendors that have been waiting for quite some time. And if, if, if someone has a space or requests a space at the market uh, over there at the Feria and they also want a location across the street, is that something that would be okay? We're absolutely <laughs> open to that. Our, you know, our market, the BCP Tuesday market, is now and always has been a community service. Um, that includes the vendors. We are there for the vendors to be able to sell their products. And if it works out best for them to sell at both markets, good for them. Yeah. Now, if, if, you go, if you're new here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and you've only recently got here, well, as recent as you can, I don't think anyone's moved here since April, March, <laughs> February, March. <laughs> but if you are new here and you're not really sure, you know, how the Tuesday market came about, you know, the history behind it, um, Phil is our, uh, I guess, resident historian. <laughs> it's, it's a British thing, and, and uh, respect, man, respect. So give us a, a, a rundown on, on, on how, how this all came to be. Yeah, I've, I've been finding out a lot more even in the last few weeks than, than I knew before, but it's, it's been important to BCP to recognize the history. And uh, for, for the history of BCP itself, we have a lot to thank quite a few people for because they originally set up the BCP with a lot of work from volunteers. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave and Erin Ross were um, possibly the main driving force behind that. Wonderful people. Yeah, for, although obviously there were a lot of other people involved. But um, the, the market came about originally because um, uh, I think it was Diane Heidecker started doing talks at the Panamonte Hotel mm -hmm. on a Tuesday morning and um, a few people said well can we sell things there to the people that are coming in so they said well why not uh, after a while I'm not quite sure exactly when it happened but it moved over to the Fundadores mm -hmm. Hotel and was there for a while then in 2009 it moved into the location by the riverside that we were in up until th this year uh, and that's when it became really the BCP market um, the foundation the BCP foundation was formed uh, the theater was put together by a whole bunch of volunteers um, and the market then grew into the space that was available for it uh, yeah. As Sheila said, we it, it's really outgrown that space, and in the last, certainly in the last year, we've had to turn away quite a few vendors. I, I don't have a number for how many, but we've always had a waiting list. Um, and now, what we see this to be is a logical evolution of the BCP Tuesday market, is to move to somewhere bigger and better where we can accommodate as as many people as, as are, are available. Well, you know, it sounds to me, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that you mentioned the natural evolution that with or without the pandemic, the market would eventually have to move to a, a, a larger location to accommodate more people. So I guess the pandemic kind of yeah. sped that up. It, it did. It, it, um, it really uh, prompted the action to take place. Um, but although the beginning of it was actually just before the pandemic uh, when um, we were told that our lease would not be renewed right. in the old building and um, you know, the way the lease was going to be operated was changing and you know, we, had a, we had a board meeting and looked at the options that were open to us uh, and it was not going to be financially viable for us to stay in the, in the old building uh, with the new lease and really that's what prompted us to start looking at how to be bigger and better sure um, and that's it that was a long process because of the pandemic because getting people together for meetings and <laughs> yeah. everything a little problematic there. was a little yeah. problematic but eventually we got there and now as i say we have we have this agreement with the ferrier grounds and uh, it all looks good good and that's and that's great information to have and uh, you know i wanted to I wanted to ask about, I know that the, the BCP, as you know, I'm very familiar with, um, <laughs> also uh, operates the theater, correct? Yes. The, the, yeah. the, uh, the Boquete Community Players, a, a, yeah. as it is. Now, I understand that that 
aspect of the VCP is still going to remain in the theater at the at the old place. Is that correct? To an extent, yes. To an extent. Um, the the theater now comes under the lease of Tap Out. Okay. Um, but we have an arrangement with Tap Out where uh, BCP productions will continue in the theatre and uh, very generously uh, Justin uh, from Tap Out uh, agreed that we could use the theatre free of charge for BCP uh, BCP productions. Well, you know, it's it's nice to see that there's cooperation. You know, because you know how Facebook gets. Everyone's <laughs> posting gifts of people eating popcorn and thinking that there's going to be. But in reality, though, there's a there's a symbiotic relationship there, um, to where everybody can get whatever they need and want done uh, in an amicable way. We think so. Yeah. We certainly hope so. <laughs> yeah, I, well, you know, I know every, all That's you guys, you know, and, and, and you know, I, I don't see it being, you know, a, a giant row. To as, as, you know, as you mentioned, Al, Facebook tends to um, spread a lot of potentially um, negative disinformation, <laughs> yeah, disinformation, and uh, uh, we are very happy with the move. We're very happy to be able to use to continue to use the theater for BCP productions and um, we really appreciate that Justin gave us that opportunity. Yeah, that's, that's, and as, as you all know they were on the show last week and mm -hmm. you know uh, this is a this is, radio show is a public service and it is uh, purpose very purposefully a, a, a positive oriented show you know this, we don't do investigative journalism here this <laughs> is you know letting the community know what is available to them what is good what's positive what's happening here and you know that's becoming increasingly hard to do in in this situation of of our pandemic is people's nerves are on edge and there's a lot of opinions out there and i respect everybody's opinion but we don't do that here and it's really good to hear that you've got this agreement with Justin and, and you know both of, of markets are willing to or have no restrictions on hey you could have a booth here you can have a booth there and I believe Sheila I think it was you who said there's there's plenty of room for everybody and having a market mm -hmm. day will just pretty much benefit everybody you know and and uh, I know that it's it's easy to, it's easier to access the the fairgrounds and I I could tell you that from the point of, of having uh, mobility issues. So, uh, you know, there's something for everybody. And I think that, that this is going to be a really, really good addition, you know, to our, uh, to our community. Market day. Well, right? and, you know, one of the things we haven't mentioned yet today, I'm not sure whether Dee and Justin did last week, but, you know, there's a new artisan market that's opened up across the street from Tap Out. I did not know. Um, mm -hmm. It's kind of right next to where Rico's Pizza Place is, okay. um, going toward the, the El Oasis. And so there's a really a third market option that's available there. Yeah, we yeah. don't really know much about their structure or their costs or how many vendors they've signed up, but it's think, going to be there. I think they were a bit unfortunate because they finished putting it all together <laughs> right at the end of February. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and uh, I don't think anyone ever actually opened up there with, with, uh, with one of their stalls. They have very nice wooden stands built in there, so uh, it would be a great place for an artisan to, to be. Yeah, it would. Um, but uh, we have no idea what's going to actually be in there or, or <laughs> like everything else when. when. Yeah. You know, there's there's been, uh, again, you know, this is just people suggesting things, that if somehow they were to... Uh, I guess parking being the the main um, obstacle, but close off the BC the bridge and that other road back there, and just have it a, a pedestrian for that one day. You know, we're just <clears throat> yeah. You know, I know I'm getting, but I'm just I, I am basically looking at what people are saying uh, and ideas that have been put out, and that has come up more than once, just to have it a pedestrian. Area. Let me let me put it this way, <laughs> <laughs> and we're on radio, so I'll, I'll be polite about it. Okay. Uh, we we have found in the past that when there have been major events happening mm -hmm. in town, and the police have closed that bridge to to road traffic, mm -hmm. um, which has happened on a few occasions on on a Tuesday, that 
very few people actually turn up to the market oh, on those days because okay. they're used to being able to drive, to drive in. down yeah uh, okay there are, i mean there are people with mobility issues who can't walk across the bridge but i think they would make arrangements for that normally but we we have observed over the last few years that closing that bridge uh, doesn't help well there you go the the handful of you who have asked that question uh, there's your answer it, it's logistically not uh, optimal you know uh, you and for those of us that are um, over 60 mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll be generous <laughs> um, you know many of us are very mobile and sure. like to get out and walk and exercise and yeah. do those kinds of things but we do have a percentage of our population yeah. in addition to which we have to think about the vendors right uh, the vendors are bringing truckloads of merchandise sure, sure. to, you know, all of our markets and uh, they need to be able to get in and offload that merchandise and closing off the bridge will not help. No. Now, I, I think it's actually something there that's very important to point out is that uh, in the new building at the Ferrier, everything is on one level. Uh, right. You know, they, they will be able to unload their merchandise at the door, we will have people helping them get the stuff in. Um, no steps to go down, uh, you know, no, no slippery slopes to navigate and uh, it should be a lot easier for people and you know we know that quite a few of the vendors have, have really struggled in the past with the steps. Mm -hmm. There have been a few who have gone around the back way and, and come in on the same level behind the theatre but you can only get a couple of people in there at a time. Oh yes, tight spot. Yeah, so uh, you know that's going to be a big a big plus for the vendors, I think, being able to just work on one level. Okay, you smell something burning? <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's not my yeah. microphone, I can tell you that. No, I'm not on fire, but uh, <laughs> stay tuned, smoke. folks. Very it sort of sounds like, it smells like electrical fire. <laughs> Doesn't it, it though? Mm -hmm. It does I'm looking around and see if I'm on fire. Yeah. But, no, that's, uh, I'm glad you pointed that out because, you know, one of the, one of the issues that I understand, and I know several of the vendors, and I know several of the vendors that have uh, bulky items, mm -hmm. um, bo you know, big boxes and, and setups and displays that are, are difficult to get to get in and out of anywhere, really. Right. And this is not a, a dig against the tap out, you know, it, the, the way it's set up is the way it's set up. Um, <clears throat> I didn't want to find out, and a few people have asked, um, when you all right, let, let's look at the, the way the building is set up. You said there's one entrance, mm -hmm. okay? In the past, at the other market, I've noticed that sometimes when I've gotten there very early, I'll get sometimes I'll get there a quarter to eight, eight o'clock, there are still vendors offloading and loading mm -hmm. uh, along with, uh, you know, the patrons, the, the customers being there, and that has caused a bit of a bottleneck, and it has caused sometimes the aisles being blocked while people are setting up. So is there going to be a separate time, a totally like you have to be in and set up and out by opening? Just asking. Okay. Um, well, let me explain it this way. We've okay. always had that rule. <laughs> okay. Um, I kind of think. They're, they're, uh, you know, we've always asked the vendors to come and be set up by 8.30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. The market officially opened at 9 when we were in the other building. It yeah. will be the same in our new, new location. Um, there are always challenges. Sure. We have some vendors that come from Dolega mm. or farther toward David. Volcan, uh, Volcan, yeah, I know Volcan. a couple of them that come from. Uh, traffic can be an issue. Uh, some of our, certainly some of our um, Panamanian, Venezuelan, Argentinian vendors don't have cars. Right. So they're, they're bringing, they're hiring taxis, which don't always get yeah. there right on time um, so yes it's always been a little bit of a challenge to have everybody set up and ready to go and to not have patrons coming in before nine o'clock yeah. yeah. um, it's likely to continue that way much as I'd like to say it would change mm -hmm. I don't think either market really is going to have a lot of control over yeah. well yeah I mean over you, that. you you bring up um, you know obvious taxis I have called taxis in the past and I've waited like we all do, you know, and that's not necessarily because the taxi drivers are lazy, you know, they have schedules and right. maybe they had to take someone further than they thought. So, mm -hmm. yeah, okay, I just, you know, that's again something else that, that you know, people have asked and that I've noticed. Um, 
Go you know, ahead. we would have the option in the new building, obviously, to close the doors and not let patrons <laughs> in before <laughs> nine o'clock. But we certainly don't want to discourage anybody. No, from coming. it doesn't never work out well. You know. No. no. Well, you um, know, finding a balance in anything is you right. know is important. So uh, you know, you definitely understand that. And um, one one thing that I don't know whether you know about, uh, you have any uh, input on this or not, but. Last week, I, we were talking to, as you know, Justin and Dee, and there was a question as to whether the uh, description of the market was going to allow it to open either later or earlier based on how the, the city market is classified. They've been open all along with grocery stores because they sell, you know. Right, the produce. And that came up last week, and I hadn't heard anything back yet, <coughs> excuse me, on that. I don't know if you have. Or what your input is on that, or is that something that is being considered? I, I think um, you perhaps hinted at that in the introduction to the program, where you were talking about the groups opening mm -hmm. and maybe asymmetric opening. Mm -hmm. uh, we are we are keeping in touch with Minsa about um, just what is possible, and if they decide that certain activities, like a market, uh, an indoor market can open, then we're ready for it. You know, if if they decide this week, maybe that's pushing it a bit. <laughs> <laughs> it's Friday, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I, I actually haven't known which day it is this week. I never know. I, I nearly is. came yesterday. I asked my wife, "What day is it?" It's the twenty third. No, no, no. What <laughs> day is it? <laughs> but yeah, um, none of us actually know what's going to happen. Yeah. But yes, it's possible, and we have everything in place where. You know, we would be able to open very quickly if we were given the agreement to do so. Now, is is it the vendors, if they have their own uh, equipment, their own tables and chairs, if they don't, is that something that is also going to be be supplied like in the past? Yeah, we, um, we've we always supplied tables to the majority of vendors. We still will. Um, some vendors have brought their own tables. Uh, that's fine. They can still do so. But we we have tables to supply. Yeah, yeah. And you know, going back to just a second ago, the only reason you know why we, why I asked about that um, classification of what the market is under the Minsa rules, um, I've got some friends of mine out in, in Panama City before they rolled back their stuff, and uh, you know they're in markets. They have there's there's these uh, you know vendor markets everywhere, and uh, the issue that they had faced was. You know, th again, this is before they relocked down Panama, Panama City, and Panama West. Was that the only vendors that they allowed in their market were the ones that sold uh, food? Mm -hmm. The the vendors that had you know jewelry and knickknacks and whatever weren't allowed in because they weren't categorized as right. as being a food vendor. And I'm, I'm wondering, you know, if if a situation like that happens, obviously, you know, we don't want to discourage non-food vendors. But would the market open up to take advantage of that with just the food for now and then adding the other vendors later? It's something that we absolutely would consider. It, it's very confusing, I think, for all of us to, to follow some of these regulations. I mean, I was, I went down to City Mall earlier this week. Yeah. And, you know, certainly their, their first floor is primarily groceries, but the whole, all three floors are open selling um, other things. Yeah, see, and that's, that's... So that's one of the things that's very confusing, that, that at, you know, with our market, we may be able to open only with produce and food vendors, but City Mall can open and sell clothing and... Well, it's the, same, it's the same situation with the City Market. You know, right. There's other vendors in there yeah. that don't sell food, and there are vendors that have food products along with other things. other things and I know we would all really love to have you know some very clear precise you know instructions but you know things are changing us so rapidly it's it's hard to keep up with and we all are here in town everybody's looking you know for things to kind of return to a, a sense of normality but on the other hand everyone's kind of worried now that we've got some new cases here and it, it, it's kind of a balancing act but you know we're all looking for things to open and we're all looking for ways to, to, to spend our money and to get out and, and socialize within the parameters, you know, to throw a handshake at somebody from across the room. And one of the, the staples that has been in town here are these, is the market. 
and everyone's kind of anxious. You know, when is the market opening? And I get, I, you should see my PMs. I, I get hundreds of them every day, and a lot of them revolve around when is this going to open? When is that going to open? And there's a significant number of them that are asking about the markets. Mm -hmm. And everyone's, you know, itching to get out there and, and do things. And, and I know it's, it's frustrating. It's got to be frustrating for you guys having everything in place and getting, being ready to go and just having to sit and wait. Well, yeah. yeah, I promise we're as anxious as anybody else to get the market <laughs> open again. Um, it's certainly one of the services BCP has provided to this community for 14 years or more. And we're really anxious to get it started again. You've probably seen that we've tried to continue our mail service through yes. this pandemic. Yes, Go Express. Oh. And uh, the, the cast and crew of Life Spirit, which was just getting ready to open yeah. as the pandemic uh, hit are keeping up with their scripts and their lines and they're very anxious yeah. to uh, get the performance ready to go again as soon as we can. All of these things are just hanging in the air and I think we were all really, really disappointed back in June when phase three was scheduled to open yeah. and then it got shut down again and, and uh, that certainly added to everybody's angst about yeah. getting back to normal life. Yeah. Um, Mince's regulations are quite detailed. Yeah. We are um, trying to be very careful to follow those regulations. Everybody has to be inspected mm -hmm. before they're allowed to open and that has to get scheduled. As you can imagine, there are not a huge number of Mince inspectors in no, David and, and Boquete, so they're kind of busy. timing Elsewhere. is a bit of an issue. <laughs> Well, no, I, I did want to ask you, and this is not a market-related question, but it is a BCP-related uh, question. Um, you know, you've mentioned the generosity of Justin and, and using the theater. There's a hundred seats in that theater. Um, when it comes time to be able to resume production, we all love the plays. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the music shows, I mean, I've been in a couple of them. They're just, they're wonderful. They're a lot of fun, and, and they... Uh, they they kind of take your mind off of anything that's going on. You sit there and watch a play. Has any thought been put into how that is going to? How are you going to do that? You got a hundred seats in there. It's a closed room, ventilation, and all that. Um, we want to know. We want the plays back, man. Yeah. That's that's a great question, Al. As they always say on radio. <laughs> yes, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, no, obviously we have thought about this, and yes, there are a hundred seats. And no, we will not be able to use all of them. Mm -hmm. um, we, we are waiting for Minsa to tell us how many seats we could use. Um, it, it, it's probably not going to be more than 30 seats yeah. that we would be allowed to occupy, maybe only 25. Uh, then, of course, the question comes up of um, would the cast of Blind Spirit like to do 16 shows instead of four? <laughs> Uh, would, would, no the, problem. would the people in the in the upcoming music show want to do that many shows? You know, yeah. I mean, you've been in the music shows. Yeah, yeah. I think the answer is no. No, but three or four of them was enough. Three or four is enough. <laughs> yeah, but whatever the rules are, we'll, we will obey them obviously, and we, we will obey them rigorously. Yeah, you know, there's no point in squeezing in two extra people and then no, it's not worth it. Really. You're going to get closed down for the next six months. Yeah. Well, and and. Certainly with Blythe Spirit, we've already spent the money to build the set and, and um, the theater's ready to go for Blythe Spirit, so we'll obviously be doing that in the theater. But there are other venues in this town yeah. that we may also consider. Sure. We're trying to um, think out of the box, be mm -hmm. creative, look at uh, what else we can do and where else we might be able to do it so that we can fit more people in for one performance and uh, not have to have 16 performances. Yeah. I mean, the theater's a, it's great. I love that theater. You know, I mean, it, it's for me as, as one who has been involved in a couple of shows, it's got a, a certain uh, charm to it. You know, yes. the backstage area, we've, we've had a lot of jokes back <laughs> there and a lot of fun and a lot of times the producer coming back and they're telling us to shut, shut up, up because we're being too loud. <laughs> um, but yeah, I do see, you know, to where you know, uh, that uh, to a large extent, you know, that would have to change, and and this is just me from me personally. Um, you know, uh, this is not based on anything that Facebook said uh, or anyone on Facebook said, but the the fairgrounds building has a stage. It does indeed. It does. You know, and 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 I'm thinking to myself, just as like I said, this is nothing official, but 
you know, there's got to be a way to put, you know, seating in there. It's and because the drop ceiling, I know the biggest challenge I've had playing music there in the past was it's like being in an upside down bathtub or in a plane hangar. You, there's, there isn't a sound man alive that was able to make that sound good. It just it wasn't designed for you that. Haven't tried me yet. <laughs> That's true. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Phil uh, has a cape, yeah. by the way, that has you know sound man on that. <laughs> the S on his chest is not for Superman; it's for sound. It actually says sound things. Sound, sound thing. man. Yeah. But I know with the drop ceiling, it's probably acoustically a little better. And like you said, Sheila, there's a lot of different venues, you know, around town. But we we have some incredibly talented and creative directors in this town. Yes. And uh, you know, we have talked over the years about various ways to put on productions and performances that, you know, may not require a big set and a big stage. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, you know, there might be some outdoor venues that would yeah. be fabulous during dry season. During dry season. Uh, yes, yeah, probably yes. not in August, probably <laughs> uh, no, no. Uh, certainly during dry season, and, and that's also our tourist season here in Boquete. Yeah. So um, we think there are just a lot of great opportunities in this town, and, and you know, as long as our population supports the services and productions that we provide, we're going to keep on doing it. I think it's important to, you know, to, to know that BCP is more than just a building, more than just a theater. Right. It's a community. You know, and it, it well, that's was, what the C stands for. Yeah, that's what the C right. stands for. It's Bucketti Community Playhouse. Um, it's even on the, on the ferrier ground, there's, there's actually at least three possible venues to have have something mm -hmm. on stage uh, in, in a room that's or a room or an outdoor area uh, that could be quite useful for probably music productions sure. so there's a few options there we're looking at plus as Sheila said there, there's other places around town for smaller or larger operations mm -hmm. so you know we're looking at a lot of different places so basically, you guys haven't been just sitting around during this pandemic and doing that. It sounds like you've been doing a lot of planning and it's a lot of, uh, but not just in the market, but in 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 the other areas of of the uh, of the BC. It's been nonstop, really. <laughs> uh, it, in a, in a few ways, the lockdown was helpful because we were able to spend more time on on the phone, on the internet, and uh, on emails and such like, and concentrate on that without thinking, oh, I've got to go shopping. Oh, I can't go shopping. I've got to find something else. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so we, we've been very busy on that and talking to some new people who want to get involved in productions as well. Um, and a lot of people, uh, old and new, are very interested, as Sheila hinted at just now, in like a minimalist type of theatre. Very little set, probably just a few props being carried on and off. And, and maybe just uh, one or two people on stage talking. Yeah. There, there's lots of options out there. Yeah, you know, I, I've, I've been to a few of those productions, obviously not you know, here in Panama, but having having grown up in New York City, um, you don't always have two or three hundred dollars for a Broadway ticket. Fortunately, uh, in the area of, of that they call the Great White Way, there's a lot of off-Broadway, off-off-Broadway, <laughs> and off-off-off-Broadway. I know we're near Broadway. Yeah, and I, I, lived, I lived in that area for many years, mm -hmm. and uh, these little playhouses, mm -hmm. you know, maybe 20 or 30 seats, they'd have these little productions where it was one or two people, maybe three people, and a few of them, there wasn't even a set change, and they were really enjoyable. You know, I, you sit there, you just watch, uh, you know the performers and just, just sit back and enjoy it so yeah I could see how that would be a, a good way to adjust yeah. to our new normal right oh yeah well it, it's actually something BCP has done in the past which is kind of fun and exciting when when we first moved here five years ago um, the BCP was one of the things that really attracted us I had not done theater since college and thought, well, you know, I'm going to be retired. I'm not going to have anything to do. How's that <laughs> retirement thing working? Out? Yeah, not working that that way for me. But um, I thought, well, you know, maybe I can get back into it. I'll do, you know, I'll do stagehand work and and crew. And uh, my neighbor at the time 
sort of dared me to come and audition with her for a play that was actually three one-act plays put together. Uh-huh. Uh, and she and I did go and audition. We were both offered parts. My neighbor turned it down because she had another commitment. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I ended up acting in this play, you know, for the first time in 45 years or something. Each act had one prop on the stage. The black curtains were behind us. Uh, the, the scene that I was doing was taking place in a bookshop. So there was just a counter with the, the clerk behind yeah. the counter. That was it. The second act was two chairs and two <laughs> actors. The third act was a suitcase. So those, and it was great. Uh, Barbara Fiorucci, who directed, did a Barbara. fabulous Shout job. out to Barbara. She's Shout on out Monday to at 10 o'clock on her show with Cynthia, by the way. Yes. Right here. Uh, and it was an incredible experience. We are always looking for more people who want to act, who want to help us off stage. Um, we are a volunteer organization. Nobody gets paid. Mm-hmm. Um, but all of these things we do for love of this community, and we want to keep doing that. And, and this is what we call on radio a master segue. <laughs> so you've been here for five years, and you got involved with the with the theater because mm-hmm. it appealed to you. At what point did you get involved with the market? That's the segue, everybody. Everything work, and you know I think that's the that's the the what really marks a a success of anything is does it work. And does it work seamlessly? And I know nothing is perfect. There's always going to be problems. There's always going to be late taxis, you know, vendors blocking the doorway, a speaker's not working, something happening, the mixer blows up, the lights don't work. There's always something. Even in radio, I've been in the middle of an interview with people, and all of a sudden, boom, the power goes out. And two minutes later, we're back on with the cell phone and WhatsApp, and I'm passing it around. <laughs> so there's always going to be problems, but, you know, the work that goes on behind the scenes, especially with with a with a with a, uh, a farmers market or a city or a market, um, to be able to just get there, park, walk in, you know, buy your things, have it a smooth process. Um, I think from from a consumer's point of view, is is a success. If you can do that, is a success. I, I think uh, we. We have a lot of experience now with running a market. I think so. Uh, I was actually involved with a market before I came to Bocchetti four years ago um, on the island of Bonaire. There was a, a cruise ship market. Um, so I was involved there. Um, since I've been involved here, um, so we, we have a good team. We, we have a team who understands the needs of the market. Um, we understand what's necessary to get things to happen smoothly. And we have people working with us who have been working with us for you know, a couple of years now. Uh, people like the, the guy in the car park. <laughs> um, I'm telling you, I got. I don't know what, what's his name. Gerardo. Gerardo, you get props because that I would know. Like five minutes later, I'd be like, you know what, park wherever you want. I'm going to go home. <laughs> and he's he's a good good. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. And uh, you know we we're, we're going to need a, a bigger team at the new place. Um, I think with all the regulations, you need a bigger team anyway. Yeah. Um, but we'll have people, as I said earlier, helping the vendors to unload quickly so they can move away from the entrance. Um, you know, we'll have people helping, helping them set up inside the hall. And yeah, we have the experience to make sure it happens smoothly. Yeah. And uh, and and really, you know, the fact that this the city has um, done some work on the road. Over there, because I remember at the October last after October, some I felt so bad for this guy. He backed his his uh, SUV um, up to the door to unload something, and I guess when he unloaded it, it, it changed the position of the car, and he pulled out, and his whole rear bumper oh. just ripped off. And then right after that, someone pulled in in a little car like yours, and the front bumper came off. But now, it's it's it's, and of course I know you mentioned one entrance and an all in one floor. The, the the road around that area is a thousand percent better oh, yeah. than it, you know than yeah. it was a, a year ago. Yeah, they've definitely done, made huge improvements in in the road and along the sides of the road. So uh, it'll be very easy for people to get in and out, both vendors and and our patrons. And uh, 
you know, I, I wanted to mention, Phil talked a lot about, you know, the vendors and the ease of getting into the mm -hmm, space sure. and the size of the space. But one of the joys of the DCP Tuesday Market has also been the socializing that goes on. Um, and, and that's something that's very important to us, that people can come. Uh, I know, even though I'm out and about most days and in town and meeting people and doing volunteer work, we have um, a lot of friends and a lot of fellow Bocatinians who um, stay home a lot more than I tend to. And that's great. People enjoy that. They sure. enjoy their gardens and their homes. Mm -hmm. and But they come to the market to see people. Yeah. It's a once a week social event. Yeah, and you know what? That the, the last time I was at, I was at the market, um, and, and you know, I hadn't been for you know for a couple of months, and and but I have friends that had you know were vendors there, and they say, hey, you come down, you know, buy my blah blah blah. I say hello. I get to the market. Now this person I'm talking about is all the way in the back, mm -hmm. and uh, it's it literally took me almost a half an hour to get from the front because here's all these people that I haven't seen in a long time, vendors that I didn't even know were vendors, friends of mine, and and it's, it was. It was really good to see everybody. I hadn't seen them in a while. You know, I haven't been playing music around town for a while, and that was how I, you know, said hello to people. So I go to the market. I'm like, wow, everybody's here. And like I said, it literally took me 30 minutes to get from the bottom of the stairs to the back of the building, and, and it was fantastic. I went home and I told Dad, I said, you know who I saw at the market? Blah blah blah. blah, blah, blah. How were they doing? And it was a conversation for the rest of the day. So my, my, my hour at the market was now, a, a, a it was a day long, you know, hey, this is great, I, I saw this person, I said, yeah, so it is definitely is a, a, a meeting place. Well, and it's one of the reasons we're just so excited about the new space is that people will have the opportunity to do that, but not block the vendor stalls. But no hugging. No hugging, yeah, unless they allow it. Yeah, is open at the they, if it's allowed, okay, we don't, we don't want to get any. We can hug control. next year. Yeah, next year will be I'll, 2021. Year will be the year yeah. of the hug. Maybe we'll set up a little elbow bump corner or something. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How about a booth just for elbow? Like a photo booth where you can pull the curtain and no one can see what you're doing in there. It's funny because I actually saw a video on Facebook yesterday or the day before of some woman back in the States <laughs> who set up a hugging station seriously in a market <laughs> yeah and it was like drop your dollar and get a hug oh wow, wow. That, that, there was the one was that the one with the curtain that you you hugged actually no the the, i saw that one too <laughs> it was like a shower curtain that you put your hands through well but. you know they say necessity is the mother of invention yeah. absolutely well, well we're we are uh, we're getting close to being um to being done with the show so before we get there is there anything that you specifically wanted to touch on again? Was there anything that you wanted to point out? We've got a few minutes. There's just one, one thing that occurred to me when we were talking just now about the one entrance is that probably by now someone has posted on Facebook saying, oh, there's only one way in and out, it's going to be a fire trap. No. Um, there isn't only one way in and out, there are other exits, so, yes, there are. you know, I just want to make that clear. And if you get set on fire, you can just run right out that back door and jump in the room. And jump in the room, <laughs> actually, yes, yeah. Fire extinguishers will be provided. <laughs> Namely, the river, but, no, seriously, I know that you guys have been really planning this for a while, and I know that you're trying to take every contingency into account to make sure that, um, you know, the, the when it does come time to open it, it will be, it will be smooth. And it will be an enjoyable experience for everybody. Yeah, we'll so, be ready. So what I'm going to do, uh, like I do with with every show, when uh, I'm done, I'm going to post a uh, uh, a post show promo. Well, I'll have links and all information. So whatever you want to get out there, I'll put out there. My uh, my promos hit about thirty thousand people, so Wonder. we'll get it out there and let everybody know. Okay. Um, I know that we don't know yet when whatever block you guys end up being in is going to happen, but it's nice to know that uh, you and other uh, people in this community are preparing, um, you know, for the eventual whatever is going to be considered normal again. Yeah, right. and, uh, I remember normal. I remember Just. normal too. Wow. But we are at a different time. What a time to be alive, right? Uh, we're all looking forward to uh, to visiting the market and to. Uh, um, seeing our friends, 
and trying to recognize who they are under masks, which don't get oh, well, that has happened to me. Yeah. Hell, oh, uh, yeah. hi, hi. I don't know who you are. You have a hat on, you have a mask on. Well, and you have hair now. And I have hair now, I know. <laughs> All right, we are just about done. It is 10.59, 11 o'clock. We have another show coming up here, so I want to thank Phil Bennett, Sheila Strunk from the BCP Tuesday Market. It has been a very informative show. I want to thank you very much for thank your you time. Much. You've been listening to Boquete Now on uh, Radio Cherokee 103.3 FM, sponsored by Big Daddy's Grill, Boulder 54, and the Tap Out Sports Zone. I wish everyone a wonderful day, and we will see you next week.